What's going on, people? This is Big G Meets the Music Stars, a show where I, Big G, get up close and personal with the stars of the music circuit. And I mean the stars who churn out original music. I think I have your attention by now. So without further ado, let's meet our very first guest on the show. Let's hit that drum roll for the beautiful combination of Tammy and Roy. Tammy and Roy, welcome to the show. It's an absolute pleasure and privilege having you here. Thank you so much for inviting us, Godfrey. Yeah, it's great to be here. Thank you, Godfrey. Let me tell you something, Tammy. Mm. The first time that I met you, and let me say this for the benefit of the viewers out here, Tammy, aka RJ Tamara, her real name is Tamara Fernandez, is not just an accomplished singer, she is also the freshest voice on the airwaves right now. It was a Thursday morning and I was hosting the morning show when Tammy, you walked in. Yeah, her training. <laughs> she was going through an orientation <laughs> and we had this very casual impromptu conversation and that's when I realized Tammy was a people's person. Getting to you Roy, Roy you were in, you are in a band, yeah. Crimson Tide and are you aware of this particular fact that you played for my wedding? That was a long time ago. I don't. <laughs> you, don't, don't you don't even remember, remember it. I wouldn't remember, Godfrey. Silver Linings is a song that has so much of a country vibe. It also has very meaningful lyrics. I really enjoyed listening to it, and I enjoyed playing it on the airwaves. Thank you. Tell me what inspired. We'll start off with Tammy. Tell me what inspired you to write Silver Linings. I remember the exact date and exactly what I was doing. It was 3rd of April. We were just about two weeks into the whole uh, pandemic and the okay. lockdown. And the title of the song, Silver Linings, it actually came to me while I was doing the dishes. And these, seriously, and I get inspired when I'm doing the most mundane things. You know, I'm going for a walk, I'm taking a shower, I'm doing the dishes, and I get inspired. <laughs> Do you also get inspired hours. while cleaning up or sleeping? Yes, yes, I do. And well, I had no maid because <laughs> we were in a lockdown, right? So I was doing things myself. And you know, this lockdown was really good for me personally also because it gave you time to sit and think. Hmm. Ah, Otherwise, you're so rushing from show to show to show and then there's children and as you're managing your home. So this was really a very nice time. So I'm doing the dishes and this word silver linings pops into my head. And I've been having a conversation with my aunt who's in the States. And you know, it's really, it was really bad in the state, still is to some extent. And uh, she was also talking to me about, you know, we need to look at the good that's happening around us yeah. through this very tough time. And that's where the lyrics came. I mean, we are getting to spend so much time at home with our children. And this is not just me, this is everybody on the planet is going through the absolute same thing mm. at the same time. I mean, we are watching history here in the making. This is going to be in our history textbooks at some point of time. I agree. This whole pandemic. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so that's where it came. And so I wrote about some, I wrote the chorus first about uh, how everyone is spending time at home, you're enjoying meals together, uh, you know, children are going to school, laughing uh, on Zoom. I don't know how that's going. My children have not yet started their online classes, but I've seen other kids, uh, heard of other kids doing it. We're talking to our friends through an app, you know. Yeah. So the lyrics just came from what I was experiencing. And I think it, struck a chord with everybody because that's what everyone is experiencing. So to underline your thought process, you came up with a title first. Yes. I then, came up with a chorus. Exactly. And mm -hmm. then you built a song I built around a song it. Around. And through the day, I wrote the song and by night I was done and I just sent it to him and I said, dude, I've written this song. <laughs> Can you try and put some music to it? So Roy, you yeah. composed the music for it. I did. I was amazed at uh, the song that Tammy wrote because she has never written songs. I've never written a song in my life. It's the first song <laughs> she's ever written. I've never even tried to write like, a song. It's not like we have a history. Not like I have a history of writing songs or you know even putting music to songs. All right. The only original song that we ever had was uh, 
Band of the Fortnite. I don't know if you remember that. It was on uh, on radio. I remember that, and I, and, uh, I remember. Uh, it was Savio, RJ Savio, and RJ and Bambi Bambi who did that. So yeah. Crimson Tide, we had an original song in that, and that is the only. And I put in a little bit to that song. You know, it okay. was mostly composed by a guitar player. Uh. So no uh, history of composing at all. And I was amazed at the song that she wrote. <laughs> so like like Ami said, the chorus struck me first. So I, I, I read the chorus and a tune immediately immediately came into my head. Okay. So I just took the guitar and got a tune. I sent it to her. And it she just clicked. It. I liked it. I was like, okay, this is it. You've got it. Just go ahead with the rest of the song. This is the chorus. We're done with that. And let me understand the thought process behind composing this particular track. Mm -hmm. uh, so you compose an original song. All you need to do is get the lyrics, have a guitar and start playing. There are lots yeah. of ways it can be done actually, but uh, this way. is how I yeah I like to do it. I like, so I just sat with the song, and the rest just came you know through with the help of Bambi helped a lot. Then there was oh yeah uh, yeah, Bambi, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, he had the most part to, I mean in this song to do. He 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 was the one who actually sat with it on the computer. So I don't have a technical background of uh, recording. Okay. So I did this on my phone. So we have this ba uh, this app called Band Lab. It's like Garage uh, Band on. Uh, Oh yeah. iPad. So this is on your Android device. Alright. So I downloaded it and uh, tried to do it on my phone. So I got all the tracks mixed and all that. And then I sent it to Bambi. So he's the one who actually got it all uh, leveled and all that. I don't know how, what, what terms you use in... Uh, yeah, he spent a lot of time. Lot of time. But I two more people, just one, two more people helped us with this. Like we had solos done by uh, my brother-in-law, Gavin yeah. Carvalho. So he plays for Truly Yours. Fantastic. So he did the guitar solo, just a little part there, and then Bambi plays the saxophone. So Bambi um, <laughs> actually has a sax solo on that. <laughs> oh, that's so, yeah. so, so wonderful. Really a collaborative effort, you know. So. One question out here is why choose a country song? Why, why make this into a country song? Why not a pop song? Just out of curiosity, uh, uh, not to... Um. <laughs> I love I, country. <laughs> I love country. I'm a big country. We love country. Kenny Rogers, yeah. and Dolly Parton, the whole. So it's basically uh, you wanted to do a song uh, to inspire people, but have your signature style. Yeah. True. What are your musical slash non-musical influences? Musical for me is is a plethora of things actually. Because my mom Style? loves, yeah, so, so I was, I grew up, it's what you grew up with, right? I grew up mm. with church music, I sang in church, ah. uh, always sang in the choir. Um, at home you there was... you still uh, sing at church? Yes, but I'm part of a now a formal choir called Jubilation. So we do weddings and, and any church occasion, that's, we do that. So I'm also part of that. Uh, but so I grew up listening to Nana Muskri and um, Kenny Rogers, Dolly Parton, uh, Colin Ray uh, later on, the Abbas, Bonnie M. So these are my influences in terms of music. But country always spoke to me. So, when, when, I, so when I was well writing um, Silver Linings, I had a country vibe in mind, which is what I told him. And I had a certain song even. There was this really brilliant singer called Casey Musgraves. And she wrote a song called Follow Your Arrow. And I told him, you know, when I was writing this, this song was playing in the back of my head. So can you just try and do something with country? So in essence, you, you told him that you would like to have the song in this particular style. Yes. Yeah. yes. And Roy, what, who are your musical influences? Um, I like Bon Jovi a lot. I know that's, that's totally different <laughs> from country music. <laughs> Yeah. But, Dude, but I really? love Bon Jovi. In yeah. fact, Slippery yeah. When Wet was oh, uh, the first album that I ever heard of Bon Jovi. He had released two albums before that, yeah. but that album was the bomb. Absolutely. Living on a Prayer, You Give mm. Love a Bad Name. Yep. I grew up listening to songs and I think it was released in 86. 86, yeah. Around. Yeah, yeah. around 86 or 87. My all time favorite is Bed of Roses. I, I know, I just love that song. It's like. Uh, you come across also as a very romantic guy, so, so but naturally a, a very sticky sweet love song would be your cup of tea. Wow. Uh, uh, I enjoyed living on a prayer, honestly. Okay. I, I digress from what we, we are actually talking about, but hey, when you talk about rock, I love talking and I can go on for hours. But I love living on a prayer because again, this that was a song about hope. True. Yeah. Who is your role model? Um. For me, I wouldn't say I have one role model. Yeah. Uh, I think that I am influenced by the people in my life. And I look to see what is the best that they have in them. 
And then I try to emulate that if that is something I want to do. Okay. So for example, my father's generosity and my mother's uh, compulsion to take care of everyone around her. She will drop everything and you know, rush to someone's rescue if someone needs her. That's essentially what makes her and that's what I like about her. Uh, my sister's uh, patience and sense of humor. Uh, you know, my friends, my family, other members of my friends, my family, my children now who have this amazing resilience, I would say, oh, <laughs> especially wow. going through this uh, lockdown pandemic. It's not been easy for kids, but I, I look at them and I learn. Yeah, I so know. I it can be inspiring. That, yes. Yeah, very inspiring. So I look for what inspires me in people. I don't think I could say I have one role model because there are just too many. No, there are too many people. You spoke about your father's generosity. I wish my dad can hear this because he was <laughs> definitely not generous. <laughs> my pocket money reflects on yeah. that particular aspect mm. and I digress. Yeah. Roy, no, you've yes. taken my words right out of my mouth. I mean, my main uh, role model is my mom. Oh. Absolutely. I mean, she, the resilience that she has, she's been through a lot, right, through oh, her yeah? 68 years, but push through, like, you know, so that is something I strive to do also. I mean, with all this happening right now, it's easy to be, be just, uh, you know, down. But then you just need to look at the silver lining through. Now, let's get to a very serious question. Whoa. Okay. You all guys are ready for it? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> as an artist, as an artist, what are the biggest challenges that you all have faced? You'll have to answer this individually because I think at some point or the other, you all would have different hurdles that you all have crossed or are still crossing. So, tell me. Um, it could be two things. Uh, one is getting, uh, when, you, when we do gigs or when we are you know, asking people to give us shows and things like that, one is uh, getting the rates that we would like, the amount of money that we would like to be paid to do certain things. Okay, okay so That's it's all... It is a common challenge, I think, for everybody. So that negotiation is always there. I find that very challenging. <laughs> and um, secondly, it's then uh, figuring out uh, what it is that your audience wants to hear, what they ah. want to listen to. Judging an audience. Judging an audience. Yeah. And that comes only through feedback. So if you've got a crowd in front of you that, you know, kind of a little bit mellow and it's very difficult to, to judge, then you have to push in a little bit of a faster track and see if that gets some reaction. So that's a challenging process. We've now got it down pat because we've been doing this four years now. Do you feel that bands could play original music and popularize that so that the mindset of people are changed? They could. It will take a lot of time though because it has to, you know, be known. So everyone has to, uh, we don't have the whole, uh, how do you say in the West, you have... Um, we don't have a record, lab, big record true. labels here. Okay. It's like we've done an original song. Where do we go with it? We've gone to YouTube, we've gone to Insta. Um, it's been shared across various groups. We've gone to Facebook. After that, what do we do? How do I get onto? And there's no one who can really, really help us out. How do I get it onto online platform, online streaming platforms? How do I get it onto Spotify? How do I get it onto iTunes? How do I commercialize it? Okay, right. so, so there's nobody in Goa. I have not come across any. Maybe there is, but I have not come across anybody as yet who will sit down with me and say, you know what, babe, this is what you have to do. Okay. Now you've done this original song, or you've done, you're doing another one now. How do we move about it? How do we copyright your song? Okay. There's one place you can go. I, I don't think there is, maybe there is, and if anyone knows out there, please give me a buzz and let me know how to go about this. But that's something I find very challenging when it comes to original music. So, original music, as you put it, is a lot of work which doesn't have that much reward. That is true. You get reward in the terms of people personal like your song, personal satisfaction. Personal they love satisfaction. it and you know, oh, this is a great but song. But no monetary benefit. Not, not that I have seen so far. Maybe other artists have, but like I said, in Goa is a small place, unless you are in Mumbai and some yeah, record label picks you yeah, up. We are Goa. talking specifically about, about Goa, Goa uh, as far as I'm this question seen. is concerned. So let's, let's take a very light moment right now. Okay. We'll, we'll start off with you. I'm going to ask this particular question for both of you. The funniest moment that you have had on or off stage? <laughs> Give it to him, he's got some stories to tell. Oh, does he? Okay, um, yeah. right. He's got some stories. So, as a duo, we haven't really had many funny, funny moments. Yeah. I can talk to you about moments with the band that I've been with. Okay. Vincent Tide, oh boy. So, the toast, just before the toast, okay? So, everyone is sitting down, they have the, the champagne being popped. Alright. And so, I teach music. Uh, at that time, I was with Sunshine School. So. There was this 
uh, we're all sitting down and the, the champagne is just popped. And suddenly I hear someone go, Roy, sir! Roy, sir! <laughs> and everyone is quiet, okay? <laughs> so it happened to be a student of mine. And he was uh, in the first, first standard. So you know how they're excited to see the, their teacher at a place not... Uh, a place other than school. Yeah. So he goes, Roy, sir. And everyone's like, who is Roy, sir? Now, who is this guy? You know? So, oh man, well, that was crazy. Oh, but that, that must have been quite a wonderful and proud moment for you. Yeah, because you have a student. Embarrassing. Uh, uh, who was it? Absolutely embarrassing. <laughs> you know, Tammy and Roy, when I look at you all, and especially when I hear your songs, and I'm sure on stage, the chemistry between you all is pretty much evident. Okay? That's a fact. And, and when you perform musically as a duo, there has to be a certain sort of chemistry so you understand each other. But what I really want to know, or rather I want to test, is how well do you know each other? Oh, wow. <laughs> what is Roy's birth date? For the January. Fantastic! <laughs> she deserves a round of applause because she's absolutely right. <laughs> awesome. We, you still have a few questions to oh, go through. Okay. What is Roy's favorite food? Prawn curry rice. <laughs> Wrong answer. <laughs> Wrong answer. Or maybe some chicken, uh, some some chicken thing, or maybe I don't know. I like a lot of food actually, but yeah. prawn curry rice is good. Yeah, yeah, that's what you always order. Yeah, you, but you don't have the option of changing it now. <laughs> By the way, the answer is hummus. Hummus. Oh, okay. Okay. Who is Roy's favorite actor? Will Smith. Yes. Uh, close, but no cigar. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm quite surprised that you came this close. Is it? Who is it? Now, it's not Will Smith. He acted with Will Smith. Yeah, he acted, oh, acted with, with Will Smith. Will Smith. Bad oh, Boys. Okay. Yeah. Who? In Bad Boys. Oh, the guy. Oh, I don't know his name. Blue Streak. Blue yeah, Streak. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I know who he is, but I can't remember his. I don't know. Family his name. Vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hilarious. Yeah, Martin Lawrence. Martin Lawrence. Okay. This one. You cannot miss. Oh God. What is Roy's favorite song? Pair of Roses. <laughs> <laughs> well said and absolutely right. Pair yeah. of Roses. And actually, I would consider that a little bit of cheating because oh, Roy had already mentioned that. But hey, you got it right, you got it right. What is Roy's favorite ice cream flavor? Maybe some chocolate, I guess. Amazing! Yeah. She knows yeah. you quite well. Chocolate, chocolate is the right answer. Yeah. Can't go wrong with chocolate. Yeah, thank God I wasn't paying money for the right answers because I <laughs> I would be with an empty wallet at the end of this show. Okay, let's see if you guess this one. Roy's favorite serial slash movie. Take a wild no guess. No clue what he watches. Okay, uh, let me give you a hint. Let's talk about a serial. Which serial do you think Roy loves? And you can watch endlessly. What? You watch what? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, uh, I think you should refer to the, the previous question. Uh, his favorite song is Bed of Roses, which makes him a very romantic guy. So let's get SWAT out of the question. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely no clue. The answer Absolutely. is Friends. Friends? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. And what is Roy's favorite holiday destination? Bali. Absolutely correct! <laughs> no, yeah, was it a wild guess? Wild guess. Because he's been there, I know he liked it. So. Oh, okay, okay. So you were aware of his travel plans. Alright, Roy, you're up next. Oh boy. What is Tammy's birth date? 21st of October. Fantastic! Absolutely right. What is Tammy's favorite food? That's a tough one. <laughs> what do I always I can see a, the <laughs> absolute uh, puzzle look yeah. on his face. The Italian for one. Uh, no. Huh? Italian? Something Italian? Pasta? What do I, do I always order pasta? No, not no. really. He's not been paying attention. No. No, he hasn't been paying attention. It's been a long time that... <laughs> We've done a show together. <laughs> ah, it's prawns grilled. Oh, yes. And, and that yes. also is one food. of my all-time favorite food. Anyway. What is, or rather, who is Tammy's favorite actor slash actress oh in this case? Hrithik Roshan. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> that must. Okay, yeah. let's assume he is uh, her favorite actor. Who is her favorite actress? Really 
He's never get, gonna get this. No. Hollywood. I just give you a hint, not for actors but actors. Just think, superheroes, man. <laughs> Who's your? Captain America. No, the other one. Oh, ah. Ah. Chris Hemsworth. Yes. Ah, <laughs> finally. But uh, again, he knows you quite well because that's not an uh, an answer that would come just offhand. Yeah, yeah, no, not so really. Who doesn't like Chris Hemsworth? Man? Come on, look at him. Just look at him. <laughs> I would have to be borderline gay too. <laughs> well said, well said. Okay, her favorite song. I'm going to kick you if you actually. Ah. Did I get it right? Yeah. You got it right because she also had mentioned it. <laughs> yeah. And look at this guy. He's actually, yeah, he's acting like as if he got it all by himself without any hint. Well, I've taken the kicking if it was wrong. <laughs> okay, her favorite. Uh, I wouldn't say this is her favorite ice cream flavor. It's more or less her favorite dessert. Uh, Seradura. Amazing. I'm surprised. I'm uh, impressed. Did y'all <laughs> cheat? By no, the way, we didn't. no. no. Because Honestly, I was with y'all all the time, so I, I wanted so to. So viewers, but we didn't. I can assure you that they haven't cheated on this particular oh, I, test. I'm surprised too, actually. Yeah, yeah okay. he's surprised that he is getting. Then you, get, you get an ice cream with Seradura flavor. It's a Seradura gelato, and it's fabulous. <laughs> I can live oh, with it. And mm, you gotta you try know it. I have a sweet tooth. You gotta try this. Very good. Oh, Mio's in Porvorim. Her favorite cereal. You should know this. You should know this. The children's favorite too. Yeah. Full House? No. Full House? Friends? No. 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 We stayed up Friends all night. The, the kids and I stayed up all night watching it. I told you about it. It was back to back episodes. No. Don't every two and a half no. men. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not kid friendly. No, no. <laughs> Mom? No. No. Again, it's not kid no. friendly. Oh. I'll give you a hint. It's similar to friends. Similar? Similar. Oh. No clue, man. No clue, absolutely. Young Sheldon slash oh. Big Bang Theory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Bang Theory. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Her okay. favorite holiday destination? Thailand. Wrong! <laughs> Why would she have been there, done that? Uh, France? No. He's not going to get this. He's, no? he's too shy. Morocco. <laughs> uh, we could go on yeah, all yeah. evening doing this. Malta, USA? Yeah. Yeah. We're getting close. Yeah. From USA, a neighboring country? Canada. Yeah, now yes. let's get specific. Yes. Montreal. I, I, went there. I went there already. Uh, the highlight. Uh, when, you, when you go to Canada. Niagara Falls. Yep. Absolutely right. And thus ends the quiz, which actually proves that you all know each other quite well. Not as well. Yeah. <laughs> and now you might be thinking, what is our reward? Now, the reward is this. I normally don't do this. But you all guys can ask me any question. Any question at all. More or less like a truth or dare situation, minus a dare. So I promise to tell the truth. Nothing but the truth, so help me God. How old are you actually? You don't look old at all. So how old are you actually? You've got all these head of hair. You've got a very Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, look right now. Yeah, but Arnold Schwarzenegger is somewhere in his 60s by now. So do, do I look 60? No, no, that's why I asked you how old are you actually? Uh, okay, um, sorry Arnold, I am not 60. I am 47. Whoa. And that's the only time I'm going to actually declare this in public. <laughs> <laughs> you, heard it here, you heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> and you heard it right here on Big G Meets the Stars. Where do we get to listen to Silver Linings? Our viewers would like to know how, if they want to catch your music or your songs. Um, you can go to our Insta page. So okay. we've got an Insta page called Tammy.and.roy on Instagram and you will find all our music there actually, not just Silver Linings but all the recordings that we do at the various places uh, that we play we perform. At, that we perform. But one final question, what are your future plans? Just are, are any original songs in the pipeline? Yes. Ah, <laughs> so you need to tell our viewers and viewers, this is something that you need to actually catch at some point or the other either through social media or YouTube. You need to listen to their music because their music is amazing. It's, if you love country music, you have to listen to Tammy and Roy because the music is what makes them so special. So uh, tell me, 
uh, which, which, what kind of music are you going to come up with now? Well, we've not yet settled on the beat. Yes. I've written the lyrics, I've written another song. It's called Wish You Were Here. And uh, basically, I dedicate, when I was writing it, the thought process was, uh, you know, I was reading up about all the healthcare workers that were dying. It was terrible. And the ones who were at work, and they you know there are people at home who are just waiting for them, and some of them couldn't come home even because they were working with COVID-19 patients. So I wrote a little song called Wish You Were Here, dedicated to all the doctors and nurses who are taking care of the people who are sick. And um, interestingly enough, uh, he couldn't put the music to it. No, I just gave it back. <laughs> and neither could the band. I also gave it to my band, which is Purple Rain, but they couldn't do the music to it either. So I was kind of stumped. I was thinking, what do I do? And then one day the lights went off oh, in yeah. the night. We had nothing to do at home. The kids and I sat on the bed, the kids with their guitars and ukulele and me with my guitar too. And I asked them, would you all, you know, would you all like to try out this and give me some music for this? And they did it. They wow. did the music for the next song. That is they so are 11 amazing. and 13 only, by the way. Ah. And yeah, they play five instruments each, both of them. So I'm pretty Nicole sure. Nicole and Craig uh, have done the music for the next song. I'm pretty sure that you're going to have a lot of Kiri fans after this particular track. I hope so. <laughs> uh, and I can't resist adding this one question. Your most memorable fan moment? There was this family that came in, and uh, there was one child with that family who okay. had Down syndrome. Oh. And you can make out immediately, right? Yes. Because they look a certain way. So this must, must have been around 10 or 11 years old. And we started playing. I don't think she sat the entire thing un unless she had to eat, until she had to eat. And she just she came. She was out there. She was out there on the floor. There's a little bit of space in front. This was at the Lazy Goose where we played. There's a little bit of space in front of us. She just came and she danced. She pulled these big group of teenagers that were at the next table. Actually she pulled them pull to them dance. She the pulled floor. them to dance. She doesn't know them. She doesn't know us from Adam Baker. She pulled them to dance. And at, by the end of that show, she had the whole restaurant dancing. And we have videos of it. You can wow. see it on our, on our Insta page. The whole restaurant dancing for this one little girl. And at the end of the show, she came and she hugged that whole group of teenagers uh, that were there. And then she came and she gave us the biggest hug. I've never been hugged like that by a stranger absolutely, before. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Oh, that was, that was, it was special. It was very special. It was like, uh, I was like, okay, this is why I do what I do. Okay, and viewers. Before we get to the song, Silver Linings, Tammy and Roy are going to do a, an amazing stripped down acoustic version of the song. I'd like to thank both of you all. It's been an amazing experience having you on the show. And honestly, you all are the very first guests on the show. It's, it's, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Stay safe, stay blessed. I'll see you guys next week. Yard, we've got silver.